In this video, I am going to be replacing the battery on the highly explosive Google Pixel 6a. <laughs> I call it highly explosive because there is a known problem that Google have identified that where this device reaches 400 charge cycles and then everything just goes wrong on it. This battery has started to swell, as you can see. I don't think you can see it, but I can definitely feel it. But we've got some swelling on the back here. I've got it on the hot plate set to 85 degrees centigrade and what I'm going to do I'm just going to run a bead of isopropyl alcohol around all four of the edges of the device. It's been sat on this hot plate for probably the past five minutes or so and it is nice and warm to the touch. I would also advise making sure that the battery is significantly drained before doing this job. Getting a fully charged battery that's already known for its explosiveness hot is not a good idea. Now we're going to get our trusty suction cup, pop it on the bottom about 5-10 mil away from the bottom edge of the phone. And what I'm doing, I'm sort of pulling back like that. That's I'm, I'm pivoting on this point here, so pulling that sort of method. I was trying to explain this to one of my staff, the, the way that I'm lifting. I'm, I'm not just lifting up. If I lift it up, obviously the phone's going to come with me. I'm pushing down here and lifting up here. So there's like, that's what's going on. What that's going to do, it's going to create a gap here, look. That gap is our entry point. And it's going to be where we insert a plastic guitar pick. Add some isopropyl alcohol into that gap now, flood it with it. We're not going to do much damage with some isopropyl alcohol. You might hear some clicking and cracking. Well clicking is good cracking is bad the screens on these are quite fragile so do take your time with this but once you've got it warm enough and you've created that gap then you should have no problem removing the screen on this model what you may also find is that it's pretty dirty this seal doesn't do a very good job and if i was the owner of one of these which i'm not thankfully i would not risk ever taking this near water because yeah, this seal is poor. Anyway, once you've worked your way around the right hand edge, bottom edge and left hand edge, then I'm going to lift it from the bottom. And what I'm going to do, lifting it, wiggling it. But what you might find that will help is if you get the guitar pick and just slide it in and pry on that edge a little bit. Just to push it out, it's clipped in here. So you just need to push it out a little bit. And then it opens like opening the front cover of a book, just like that. Just make sure that it's not still sat in on this, this edge because you need to have it out like that, then open it up like that. And that's it. This screen is open, or this phone is open, should I say. The screen's not quite removed yet. We've just got a screw, a shield, and then we can get the battery out next. Let's close it back up and take it over to the nice cool workbench where we can get it took apart more. When I said cool, I didn't mean cool as in groovy. I meant cool as in cool to touch. That that hot plate is very, very hot. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to leave the suction cup attached to the front screen there because that's going to act as a little stopper to stop this phone screen from falling over. As you can see, if we let that fall over, then there's a risk that there's going to be some damage to this cable here, which is a very fragile part. Now. Google are doing something about this problem. I think they're offering some compensation towards a new phone or a battery replacement. But I think you have to send it off to them or take it to a approved place. I don't know the full details. Next, take this screw driver. It's a T5, I think, like a Torx 5 or a Torx 4. Let's have a look at what driver I'm using on it. A lie. It's a T3. Look how twisted that is still works out anyway remove that screw and then i always find these things awkward to get out i don't know why but somehow you have to ping this uh this little um strange connector out i just don't know how it works yeah ping this strange connector i always end up bending these maybe we'll get underneath it like that or maybe i'm looking at it wrong and we have no it doesn't work like that I was thinking maybe the screw removes so that you can slide it out and under, but I don't think it works like that. Well, I don't know how I did it, but you have to ping that out. Look, it slides under there, and then it's sort of sprung into a little thing there. And I lifted it up and slid it across. That's how I did it. 
I'm going to lift the phone up. I'm going to put my thumb on there. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to pull that cable and disconnect the screen just like that. Very, very easy. Right. So now we need to remove this metal shield and the bottom speaker. And I believe most of these screws are the same size, but just look out for any um, that are incorrect sizes or unusual sizes i'm going to use a little metal um a little magnetic parts tray to keep the screws organized and basically what i'm going to do with that i'm going to lay the screws out in the same way that i remove them and and that way it's quite hard to get it wrong unless you end up knocking the um the tray with your hand and everything goes everywhere but we're not going to do that really oops ha 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 so it reminds me of that, uh, was it the Samsung Note 8 or the Note 9 that was uh, victim to a battery problem? Um, but it's, I don't know, I don't, I don't know when they're gonna admit that the Google Pixel 7a battery is flawed as well because that's another one that I, I get in a lot, what I've expanded, um, pushed the screens off, caused unnecessary damage to the phones really. Um, but earlier this month, um, well, Actually, it was last month now because it's the beginning of August. At the beginning of last month, they sort of said, okay, yeah, we did something wrong. Um, here's how we're going to rectify it. And I think they've rolled out the program towards the back end of July 25. And so one thing I have obviously noticed is, like, like I said, Google will offer to replace this. And I've had this conversation with a couple of customers already, where, whereas they've said, like, this particular one is like, oh, I'm going on holiday tomorrow. I need it fixing. So... Fair enough, he wants it sorting before he goes on holiday. The other one, I think they ended up taking it away and they were gonna they they were gonna go and explore Google's options and then come back if it, if they wanted a battery and blah blah blah. Anyway, now that we've got all those screws removed, you don't have to remove these from the speaker. I just lifted up from this little bit of graphite stuff and then just like lifted it up like that. There was a bit of tape holding it down there. But generally, this little shield comes away quite easily. I say little shield, it's massive. Now that we have got into it, we've got access to the battery connector. Let's zoom in. We're going to disconnect this one here. And then these Google Pixels, right? They have this absolutely terribly designed battery removal system. And the idea of it is that you pull backwards and forwards on these and it should have, hang on, it's gonna work. It's actually worked. Anyway, the idea is that you pull backwards and forwards like that and you can remove the battery. And it turns out that, yes, you can. And it works on this occasion. Um, I've never seen it work before. And now that I've shut it, I don't think it is working. Uh, but yeah, that's how you take it out, apparently. I wonder if this has had some work done to it before because, nah, that screen was hard to get off. That's the original adhesive. Now, let's go and put it back on the hot plate because I'm going to remove all this adhesive with it nice and warm. So just regarding removing all this adhesive, I'm going to use the spinny tool first of all to run the adhesive off this these edges. Let me zoom in so you can see exactly what this is doing. This spindle spins around quite fast and it just creates friction and allows this to be removed real easy. So I'm just going to run this around all four edges to remove as much of the thick of the adhesive as possible. And then, like, it doesn't have to be too warm to do this, but it, it helps if it's on the hot plate. It'll just soften the adhesive, making it a bit easier to work with. So yeah, just keep running around, and then hopefully by the time I've got this adhesive off, the adhesive on the battery will be ready to just roll off with my thumb. I'll try and do it with this, but I think because of the shape of it, it might need extra measures We're just carrying on working our way around i think that's the most of that off you don't have to be perfect try and get as much off as you possibly can but we can do a bit more work to clean this up you know while i'm at it i'm going to get the screen as well because there is some leftover adhesive on the back of the screen so I'm just going to run that over can you see what it's doing there just turn it into little balls and wrapping around the spindle I'll try and remember, like I always say I will, to put a link for this uh, spindly tool in the description below. Um, but I just don't, I don't even know where it came from this. I, you know what, I do know where it came from. It came from a company called Okamaster many years ago when I bought um, the Okamaster machine. Anyway, now that we've got all this removed, 
we've just got the adhesive on look, let's have a look see if it'll do it on this oh yeah look at did you see that did you see that it took it off one little spin let's see if we can get it on that oh that's a bit thicker but look at the strength that's it that's all it took to get that off Look, if you've seen that and you've seen me do that, you're going to buy one of these tools, aren't you? I'm not even trying to sell it yet. I'm not even going to put a link. In. No, I am going to put a link. <laughs> I'm just joking. Anyway, that's it. All the adhesive removed. It took a couple of minutes. Let's talk about the parts. This gets disposed of according to your local recycling laws or rules or legislation. Don't chuck it in the pond. And then we've got a seal. That's to stick the screen back down. That's a genuine Google part. And then we've also got the battery, which is another genuine Google part. One thing that I really, really struggle with with these Google Pixel batteries is getting the stickers to stick them back down. I don't know whether I struggle or I forget. Anyway, all the parts that we get that we use in this video are available from our video sponsor, Mobile Centrics UK. Or if you're not in the UK, mobilecentrics.com. I'm going to use some 10 mil tesla tape and I'm going to cut a few strips and because it was quite a thick bit of adhesive down the bottom so we need we need a, a thick bit of adhesive down there don't we it's pretty similar to the adhesive that was already on it um and then yeah just going to cut it into that little edge there we've got three strips 30 mil of tape and then at the top we're gonna put a bit more in and then we'll just cut that down to size as well don't put it on this. This is the wireless charging coil under there. And the, the reason why we don't put it on that, like, yeah, it's going to stick and it's going to add more uh, surface area of it, surface adhesion. Surface area adhesion. Is that the word we're looking for? Anyway, it's going to add that. But at what cost? If you try and take that out again, you're going to damage something. What is under that graphite tape there? That's the wireless charging coil. Moving on swiftly. Let's peel off the remaining top of the, top of the adhesive, top of the tape. So the test tape as well, available, Melbourne Centrics UK. It's not cheap though, don't get me wrong. It's about 20, 30 quid a roll, but it's much better than other brands of tape that you can buy. Lift all that off. And then look, we've got the, we've got the chopping out system. It comes on there, but it don't come with, a, with, a, um, with an adhesive, like I said. So let's just line that up, stick it down, make sure it's nice and square in there. I don't know what's causing these batteries to expand. Maybe it's the poor adhesive because we saw how easy it was for me to remove it. Line up the battery connector and reconnect it like that. And then we're going to go in with the rest of it. We'll get all those screws back in place. Just make sure the vibration motor is stuck to the back of that because there's like a gap here, look. Just make sure that gap has got something in it because it will not vibrate otherwise. Push that down. And then, of course, we've got all those screws to get back in. Now, because of the way that this screwdriver's twisted, it's a bit awkward. I just need to replace it, but, you know, other things get in the way most of the time. It, because it's twisted, it just doesn't... It takes twice as much effort to install screws. I don't know what this one is, or whether it'll work. But if it does, we don't need that crappy -ass screwdriver anymore. So it works for this one, but I know, I know why I don't always just immediately go for this screwdriver. And it's basically because sometimes it doesn't work. I don't know, like some, I guess this one must be a T3 screwdriver, whereas some of these screws, what we need, maybe it's the Motorola ones that have a T4 or a T5. And that's what I'm getting mistaken for. Just like I say, just remember what, what goes where, because look, I've got a couple of screws left here. But you can see the, the way that these are laid out. We've got five screws left. And we've got, we should have five holes left. One, two, three, four, five. There we go, look. So just make sure that you're putting the screw back where it came from. The biggest risk is either a long screw damage on the motherboard, which is where you put a long screw where a short screw should go and you just rip through the board. Or you put a short screw in and it just won't grab on and then you're left looking for it when you've got one left. One more screw in here. And then the last thing that I'm going to do, all I'm going to do is just run a bead of alcohol down this edge. Like I say at the beginning of the video, they just seem to get really dusty, this, uh, this edge. So get a Q-tip 
and just give it a real good cleaning up. All four edges. Make sure, it, don't skip this step. It might look like, oh, I can't be bothered to clean this foam up. Get some alcohol and clean it up. If you don't have alcohol, use some bloody hand sanitizer or something. Just clean it up, don't use flavored ones. Just like some plain alcohol hand sanitizer. No, buy some alcohol and clean it properly. It's gonna help the new thing to stick. And then as well, when we get to the point where we're sticking the sticker down, don't use glue, right? Please, please, please. Don't use B7000, T7000. The problem with those glues is the next technician who's got to open this phone doesn't want to remove all that glue. They, they don't want to break the screen because somebody else has decided to use glue to stick a bloody screen down. It's just not on. It's not, it's not kind to other technicians, is it? Be kind to each other. Be nice to other technicians. <laughs> right, I'm going to do the same on the back of the screen as well. I am going to be a little bit more gentle with this bit, especially down this bottom area here. You don't want to cause any problems to the uh, important cable there for the OLED display. Yeah, just uh, a quick clean up. Make sure that all the alcohol, uh, not the alcohol, all the adhesive is removed. That's all. Could even get a brush at this point. See this bit here, the ear speaker. This one's mashed up with all kinds of muck and gunk. And then before you stick the screen on, don't stick the screen on, then try and put this on, because it don't work. You're gonna remove the clear sheet off the film, line it up in the top left corner, follow it down the left-hand edge, and then the rest of it will follow suit all the way around. That's it. And you can use a plastic spudger or the wide end of the tweezers works really well for this as well, I find. And just run it down. Make sure that it's sat real nice and flat, flush, plenty of adhesion. I've used that word a couple of times. It's not usually in the vocabulary. Adhesion. And then we can finally remove, where is it? Where is it? We need a, We need to find a place where we can get hold of the blue film. Usually they have a little pull tab, but this one's not. Get a bit of that and pull it off. Just that top layer. It'll leave behind one last blue layer, which we're gonna peel off at the very end. Let's go in now with the screen, reconnect that. Just use the flat end of the black plastic stick to make sure that that sticks down good and proper before you finally line up this guy. Use the tweezers to line this up because it's awkward with your thumb, especially if you're doing it like me and holding onto the screen. Look, I'm holding onto the screen with my fingers here, so I just can't move those. Push this down. It's, it's, it's easier to push it down than it is to take it off. And then we just got that one single T3, T4 screw. Oh, this, this screwdriver says T2 on it, so that explains a lot. So it works with a T2, it's actually a T3. Get that screw in place and that's it. We were so close to being done. We just need to remove this last bit of film, which is easy. Just peel it off all the way around. Like close the screen up a little bit. Just lay it flat like that. It's not gonna do any damage. Peel off the rest of the film. And then in regards to putting the screen back on, you're gonna put it in at the top first. Same as we took it off. Remember when we were wiggling it about from the bottom push down on these edges and then that's it look at that it's all in it's all fixed down you just need to turn it on now make sure it charges press the power button to turn it on there we go that's it done repair complete thank you for watching and see you in the next video